Good afternoon. This is the old captain with an exclusive WKORN report. I'm here at um, Chattahoochee River, what we call the Hooch, and I just wanted you to see a few things and um, talk to you a little bit about about our our little fishing hole, give you an idea of what the uh, flood has done to it. The the Hooch where we park here is right next to a softball complex, Metro Atlanta softball complex, probably five or six fields out there. And you see how far we are from the clubhouse, and the clubhouse is two, two stories high. During that flood, that clubhouse was underwater. Just the two heating and air units were sticking out of the surface. So that gives you an idea. Right here in front of the truck is the um, infamous pathway to proper pull downs and it's a bit muddy right today so I don't know how much walking down there I'll do but you'll see the Dick Lane Bridge out in front of us and and where I'm standing uh, I would have probably had 15 feet of water over my head because the Dick Lane Bridge the river was lapping at that horizontal beam across the bottom of the bridge back in October it has changed um, this area completely all up in the trees you can see debris and uh, plastic bags that are still way up in the air and as I gingerly walk down around the path um, we're going to try to show you a few things maybe before I fall down but um, at any rate we um, you've read stories you've, you've seen the uh, several years ago when we had the hog of the log contest. Well, that log was right out in front of those trees. A uh, year later, we had the king of the ramp. Of course, that's the boat ramp to my left. It's, um, it's hideous. I mean, it's, right now, it's got three feet of mud, three feet of mud in it, and you can see it would be almost, um, no, almost no way anybody could put a boat or would even try to put a boat in the river, in the river there. Um, guys, we sit here on this little bitty, this little bitty knoll of sand and mud under these sycamores. There's nothing to it. It's not very big. You can't fish more than five or six people. But, um, you know, everything's relative to us. It's a, it's a thing of beauty. It's, it's home. There's evidence right here in front of me that someone's been fishing here lately. You can tell how the river has, um, eroded some places right here in front of us if the camera will pick it up across the ramp you can see where the sand has eroded off of the off of the bank over there as well some of the major changes have been across the river a lot of those trees that are horizontal and leaning 45 degrees or more last spring they were upright all across the bank you can see the erosion the evidence of erosion across the river there's a sand pump that I believe will probably never pump again. The uh, barge down the river that pumps the dirt up through those pipes into that screen above, um, it was underwater and the diesel engine and everything I'm sure is full of mud and mud and sludge. But um, <coughs> a lot of things have happened under these sycamore trees. One of, one of my fondest memories I was sitting here all by myself in the summertime, shade everywhere, and I hear this booming voice from right up here up the path. Booming voice. And this this beast of a man starts walking down the path and it was like an eclipse. You couldn't see the sun, you couldn't see daylight. And all of a sudden this big voice says, Hey boo boo, what are you doing? Well, folks, that was my first day meeting Big Bird. I mean, 6'9", 325 pounds, just a, a bulk of a man. Comes down here, we start talking about catfishing, carp fishing, and within two years, I have nurtured him and brought him to the point where now he's the CAG photo child. Everybody wants to meet Big Bird. And it all started right here. Another thing that started here was Cool Dad has honed his plug of perfection. 
to the point that it is today. This is where the cutting edge, right here, at this spot. Like I said earlier, this is the, the uh, venue for the, the king of the ramp, the hog of the log. Last year, the infamous uh, Sultan of the Sycamore contest uh, was held right here. Right under these very sycamore trees that probably stand, I don't know, 20, 30 feet above us. Um, right here off this point, Tim Cool Dad Gill set an all-time hooch spot record by catching a 17-pound, 3-ounce chunk of gold. I'll never forget it. We sit here in the summertime, and, and everything has a, a time and a season. The first thing that happens is under that middle, middle beam on the bridge, the barn swallows will come. They come back to the same spot year after year. They don't make their nest to the right. They don't make their nest to the left. They always make it in the middle. They go to the bank, they get their mud, they build their nest. Another thing that happens, the leaves come out on our sycamores. Some of the trees are a little more mature than others, a little wider, there's some younger ones. And some of the leaves come out sooner than others, but they come out in that order every year. There's no, there's no um, mistake. There's no chance. Everything happens every year. Another thing that happens up above our ramp toward the softball field, the um, Canadian geese will raise babies. And before long, you'll see these little fuzzy footballs with feet. And they'll be walking down the ramp. And they'll come down the ramp into the river. Mom and Dad will guide them as they swim across the river into that grass over toward the sand pump. Later in the afternoon, they'll reverse and come back. Not long after that, people start gathering. Thursday afternoons, Fridays sometime, people will come down, maybe they'll read our stories, we'll say come see us, and they actually do. Some people come just out of curiosity. Uh, some people come by appointment. I believe some people come by divine appointment. But before you know it, you got people sitting all under these trees. We'll have chairs from the ramp all the way under the trees, all the way back to the other side. And um, like I said, you know, six or eight people with one line is about as much room as we have. But the best part is the stories. You'll hear somebody tell one, bank talk, we call it. And then somebody else will say, well, that reminds me about the time. That reminds me about the time. And then Big Bird will stand and hold court. He'll put his back to the bridge. He'll face the crowd. And then he'll tell a story about a monkey. He'll tell another story about an encounter with a midget. And before long, folks, you're laughing in places that you never thought you had places. Another thing that Cool Dad talks about, he has sat here for several years now and, and he waits as the river runs from right to left. And he looks, he looks up the river, way up the river. And, he, and I say, Tim, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for Huck and Jim and Tom coming around that bend on the raft. He said, I know they'll come one day because they share the spirit that we have. So folks, there's a lot of reasons to come to the hooch. We roll up our pants legs, tuck off our shoes, and although we're 57, 60, 60 and above, we're boys again just for a little while as we sit here by the river. Something fascinating about a river, it's never the same. Always changing, pretty much like we are. I don't know what you're doing this year, but it's January and it won't be long until all these things will be bursting forth again, and if you're ever near Atlanta and you want to have a good time, let me encourage you to come see us. Thank you, and y'all have a great day.